there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist here on YouTube, and I am going to be reviewing these watercolor sketchbooks for you today. I've recently had a couple people ask me about these sketchbooks, and I didn't reach out to the owner of them, to the maker of them, but he reached out to me on Facebook and asked if he could send me one of the mix and draws and one of the watercolor trips. So I'm going to show them to you. The mix and draw is probably a little more for more advanced people who have some idea what they're doing. They have the paint on this kind of plastic page and opposite is a sketch. And I'll show you in the back there are the original photographs that you're working from and you as the artist get to make the decision about what colored paints you're going to use, etc and learn how to mix them from the paint that is on this plastic sheet. The set comes with a little aqua brush. I don't tend to use aqua brush as much. I don't like the water flow that I, it, I can't control it. I like to have a regular brush that I can do that with. So when you see me doing the demo from this book, just know that that's why I'm using different brushes. But each one of these you can see has a sketch to go with it and the paint colors and things. There's one little instruction sheet and I'm going to find out more about the EduMe classes and send you a link to that. If there are more than one, I only saw a preview of one and I'll have more information on the blog about all that stuff. But this is the packet of photos that you have to go with each of the pages. So you can paint from the original photos and make your color decisions, etc. from that. They're not marked with anything to tell you what page they're on, but it's pretty easy to figure out from the sketches which photograph you're working from. And then they're, they're, of course, they're on social media, so you can go check out social media and see more information and in, talk to the artist himself. The other one is called a watercolor trip. And this one has a whole bunch of stuff that you would need to do some watercolor sketches. This is a palette. It's like this plastic sheet. I think it's the same material as the sheet that's in the other book, but they have dots of paint on it and you can... Uh, use that as a palette. I'll set the book aside for the moment and show you that in a flip through in a, in a second. I got a second little container of dots of paint, so same colors in the little little palette there. Uh, got some scraps of watercolor paper, a piece of paraffin wax, a little bit of masking fluid, and two small brushes. I found the brushes to be too small for me. You guys know me. I like really big brushes, and I cannot lie, <laughs> but... Here is the flip through of the book. There's information about the two artists who have done the original paintings for these. This one has a lot more instruction to go along with it. And if you're trying to learn to paint, this is probably the one I would recommend more for somebody who's trying to get started. This whole page has little tiny mini tutorials on both sides about how to do different aspects of painting and their recommendations for it. I use different techniques than this as well. There's a bajillion of them in watercolor, as you probably know but this gives you a, a real good idea of what the book is like. Each one, each page has the original photo, three step-by-step -step pictures, and the step-by-step -step instructions. It tells you which colors they recommend you use. I found that some of their colors were not necessarily the colors I would choose to use, so I would say just use what colors you want to use. Each one of these has two sketches, and they're perforated so you can tear them out. The first sketch I did in this book, I did while it was still attached to the book and I had all kinds of paper curling going on. The second one I tried by tearing it out and then doing the sketch and I still had tons of curl. And after that, I just decided I was going to take them out and take them down onto a board. So I recommend that you probably will want to do that so that you don't have to deal with the curling of the paper because this is all 90 pound watercolor paper in both of these books. It's not intended to be super high quality paper, so just know that going in. I had a few areas where I was dealing with some blooms that I wasn't expecting because I'm used to working on bigger paper and, and heavier paper, etc. But it still works great for sketches because they're sketches. It's a great way to learn from somebody else's technique in a step-by-step -step fashion and be able to do it with a sketch already done because I know a lot of people struggle with just getting the proportions of the sketch right. And having that in the book is a big help for a lot of people. So I think you're gonna find it kind of interesting. So 
just know that uh, all the links for everything are going to be in the doobly-doo down below so that you can go over to Etsy and pick up either one or both of these if you're interested, as well as I'm going to have more information on my blog. If I get more of these paintings done before this video goes live, because I'm going to take this with me on a trip that I'm going on, then I will post pictures of those on the blog post because I'm doing the video before I leave for a trip. So as you can see, I am painting this one while it's on a board, it's taped down. I started out using their brush and this is the bigger of the two brushes. They're kind of okay brushes. For me, it's just the fact that they're small. <laughs> it's a real bother. I'm used to really big brushes. This is the indigo color that they say to use for the sky, but look at this French ultramarine blue color. Much better sky color. So as you're working through this, I would recommend using some of the scratch paper that they give you in the box and swatching out your colors, and then you can decide for yourself which one you want to use, because if you're just using using their color chart with the, the list of the step-by-steps, and it says use indigo blue for the sky, you're going to end up with a very gray sky because that indigo color of the paint is not a very happy blue. It's more of a Payne's gray kind of a grayish blue. So swatch them out so you can make your own color decisions as you go. And in this painting, as well as the other one that I'm going to be doing from the other book in the second half of this video, I'm using a lot of my own technique stuff because I started painting and I realized, oh shoot, I didn't read all the instructions ahead of time and I wanted to paint while it was wet. I do a lot of wet and wet techniques. So as you're watching this, just know that I may not be following the instructions that are in the book for this one because I'm trying to accomplish some of my techniques. I wish I hadn't done that because I wanted my roof here to kind of have the the ability to bleed into the trees a little bit, have some of those colors merge with each other. But they talked about, I read afterward, a paraffin wax technique that looked really cool on the roof and I didn't get to use it because I did not read the instructions. So do as I say and not as I do and read the directions <laughs> before you get started and don't just follow along with me. So links are in the doobly-doo. More information will be on the blog post. And I'm going to turn on some music and you can kind of travel to Italy in your mind as I do these paintings and I hope you will enjoy it and maybe have a little bit of relaxation in your day. And I'll see you guys again in the next video that I post. Thank you so much to Vitaly for sending me these books because they're going to be kind of fun to play with. All right, I will see you guys later. Enjoy the rest of the painting.